I believe this question, they are, as I've mentioned before, as an extension one question, good morning, they provide you a suggested substitution. Yep, people who've done this question already. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, and to flex your extension two muscles a little bit, I want you to have a look and think about what might be a plausible thing to substitute if you didn't know what it was. Okay. Now, I want you to remember, I could fresh in my brain, um, I showed you this one last week. Do you remember this one? Okay. And the suggested substitution in that case was 3 sine theta. Okay. Where did the 3 come from? Obvious question. Square root of A. Square root of A. Okay, so clearly I'm going to have to match it up with this 9 here. So that's that's your A squared, right? So if you take the square root of that, you'll get 9 minus 9 sine squared. Okay, so that's where the 3 comes from. Why sine? Why, why did we choose that? Yeah, Mark. Okay, number one, sine is... We know lots about the calculus of simple tree functions as opposed to... You know, this doesn't fit into the chain rule thing that we saw before, reverse chain rule, I should say. But there's a particular thing that's not just nice about like the calculus of trig functions, but the particular algebraic arrangement here that makes sine a really, really good choice. Ooh. On the minus, so like you, you have trig identities, so if it's a minus, you, it's preferred to do sine cos. If it's a plus, it's preferred to use. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So the idea here is if I end up getting. Um, I won't worry about the variable integration for now. But if what I end up getting under here is this, right? The reason why this is useful to me is because I can take advantage of the Pythagorean oh. identity. Right? Do you remember that? So if you know, <coughs> excuse me, that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one, then you can take either of these guys over to the right hand side, and then you can kind of almost interchange between like uh, get rid of sine squared and replace them with a cos squared. Right? So you might recall that you take your factor of the square root of 9 out the front, and then that leaves you with 1 minus sine squared, which is cos squared, which you're still not out of the woods yet. Remember, we had a look at that absolute value thing, and we're going to address that again today in a different way. But look, like this ends up much simpler, and then you can carry on. Okay? Now we have something different underneath the square root here. Yeah, right. So why can't you just let, like, let x be cos x, and then... What? So you don't have to change the variable. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, why not? I want to. The reason why we don't do that is because if I say this, yeah, I start to come up with all kinds of problems, right? What I'm doing here, like what I what I did up here was this. What's this doing? This is introducing a new variable, right? Which is fine because like with integration we've seen, it's a dummy variable. It's only standing in for a number, okay? So it's like, okay, I'm just gonna stand in for a different number, and that's fine. But the second you say this, this is saying something quite dramatically different, isn't it? This is introducing, actually, that's an equation, which has certain solutions. Um, two, I guess? Sorry, because there's one. Two? Wait. Sorry, I'm hang on there. Yeah, there's zero. Oh, yeah. It's gonna. No, I'm not sure. I have to double check that. It either has one or two solutions, right? In other words, this is now saying actually I want a particular x rather than no. Look here, I, I want a whole range of x's, right? So good one. This also then complicates it for when I differentiate dx on dx, eh? Right? By the way, there's a reason why it becomes nonsensical because this is um, it's not a function anymore. It's an equation which has a particular solution. So, if you're wondering why I introduce more variables, because introducing less variables is painful. Alright, so, since, as Vince suggested, in this case, good morning, the, um, the minus is not there, so I can't take advantage of that identity, there's a plus, right? So, the, the way to incorporate that plus is to divide everything through by, in this case, cos squared, right? If I do that, I end up with tan squared. Plus one equals okay. Cool. Now this again I can deal with, right? That thing underneath the square root is going to be this under the square root, so I'm going to go ahead. So that's what suggests to me I should try something to do with tan, which is indeed what the um, what the textbook actually suggests to you. They say this, so you can carry on with me now. If this is what we begin with, and again the three comes from exactly the same place that the three came from in this case. I'm going to start marching through this. If I know this, then I've got all the pieces I need to start replacing things in the function. But then I need to take care of the variable of integration, right? What am I integrating with respect to? So how do I do that again? Dx on d theta, right? You guys know we are so used to 
differentiating with respect to x, but that's because x is usually, we usually have a function of x, right? This is not a function of x, it's a function of theta. So that's why I'm differentiating with respect to that. Um, what is the derivative of tan again? Sex. Yeah, very good. It's sec squared. Cool. Now, this is not, um, this derivative is not in the form that I want it, which is useful for me. Over here, what form do I want it in? Yeah, I want d theta on dx to appear in here because then that on dx and this dx will cancel, which is what changes the variable for me. So you can do it a couple of different ways. I'm going to do it a different way from what I've done before. I'm going to divide both sides by dx on d theta. Does that make sense? What am I going to get on the left-hand side if I divide that? Yeah. That'll just be 1, and we know why 1 is usual, because I can put it anywhere I like. And when I divide by this, you just get the reciprocal on the right-hand side. Uh, like so. Make sense? <laughs> all right, so now I'm ready. I can do all my substitutions, but because this is a little more um, involved, like I've got more stuff over here, versus over here. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple more steps than I usually do, okay, just so I don't screw this up. Let's do the normal substitution. So, I've got the integral of one over, what's the first thing? Don't skip anything here. So, right. so, so do we have to divide by three sex by theta or times by? Yep, yeah, good question. So let's just rewind before I do this because you really wanna know where this is coming from. What have I done from this line to this line? I've divided both sides by this, right? Divided both sides by this. So therefore, this guy hasn't done, he hasn't moved anywhere, right? He's still three sec squared theta. And I'm gonna substitute this whole thing in, like I'm, going, I'm imagining, well there's a one, I'll put it in there, oh, okay, in place of that. Because I did what you usually do, which is one over three sec squared theta times mm -hmm. dx on d theta, equals one, mm -hmm. and it doesn't work. Yeah, because you're yeah. substituting dx on d theta, and the dx's don't cancel, which is okay. what you want. All right. So that's why you turn it back upside down. It's a bit confusing when you're dealing with all these reciprocal identities, which is why I suggested here's one easy way. Focus on what you want to get rid of, which is the dx. All right. right. And in fact, this guy just kind of comes along for the rest. All right. Okay. okay. So, sorry, where were we? I'm substituting x into here, right? So this is going to become, at the front of the square root, 9 times 9 10 squared. And it looks like my fraction's not going to be big enough. Uh, what do I have here? This is the same thing, right? 9 plus. Okay, so far so good. Taking care of the function, mostly. Now what? Say it again. Yeah, okay, so I, I can do some canceling over there, but before I do that, oh, this line is not even finished yet. Yeah? So I need to deal with this dx using this guy. Okay, so I'm just going to substitute the whole thing in. It's going to become. 3 sec squared theta d theta on dx, and then there's the dx that was there to begin with, and that's what makes my cancelling happen. Right? So cancel, cancel. How does it look? Does it look good? Say it again. Three sec Okay, so you're looking at the next thing? Yeah, I just want to make sure this line is right. Is this line right? Yes. You happy with it? Now, it's a, like I said, it's a bit of a mess. Look how much stuff we've got flying around. So take care. Let's do one step at a time. Uh, something that's been suggested a couple times is let's deal with these guys, right? So there are some constants which I can simplify. What lands over here? A three. Okay. Uh, there is also a three here, isn't there? It's the square root of nine. So I'm going to take both of those guys out the front. Are you okay with that? There's a three here, and there's a three here. So that leaves me with this out the front. Okay. And what am I going to have here? I'll, I'll put this guy on top because he doesn't need to be over there. Ten square here. Okay, so far so good? You may well already gone on to the next step. That's that's fine. You can see I'm deliberately doing this quite slowly because there's all kinds of things that are gonna cancel here and I don't wanna muck them up, okay? Right, where am I gonna go next? Suggestions? One plus ten squared theta equals seven. Okay, good, so I'm going to leave this guy on the top. Leave this guy here. This is sec squared underneath the square root, which we've established earlier, so. So, okay. Now, I can go one more step before I have to deal with this square root, and then I have no choice. I've got to resolve it. Okay. What else could I do here? What else could I do? <coughs> what are these guys? What are they? Like they're both identities, right? What's what's this actually standing for? One, one, it's one on one on oh, cos squared. Cos 
I mean, I could replace it with one plus tan squared, but that ends up making things messier, not easier. So this is one on cos squared, right? So really, him being on the numerator really means there's a cos squared on the denominator. Do you agree with that? Okay. But what's tan squared? It's sine squared on cos squared, yeah? So there's a cos squared and there's a division by cos squared. They're both on the denominator, okay? So I'm going to cancel both of them out. Uh, I'm not going to fit there. Let's go. What have I got? A ninth of 1 over. So when the cos squares cancel, they leave behind the sine squared on the denominator. Are you okay with that? So sine squared, and then you still got this guy kind of hanging around. Okay.